Welcome and thanks for joining me for the first episode of Read Plate, a podcast for harmonica geeks, blues enthusiasts and no doubt some other stuff too. My name is Lee Sankey. I'm beginning this podcast with something really special and different, something that I hope will be of genuine value to harmonica players out there. My first guest is Chicago's very own Joe Felisco, who is not only one of the world's finest harmonica players, but the father of diatonic customization and a world-renowned educator. Now, Joe and I kicked around a number of different potential topics for this podcast, but in the end, Joe was really keen to talk about the fundamentals of playing the harmonica, which he's grouped into five areas. Now, when we started recording, we weren't sure how things would turn out or how long it would take to cover them. And two hours later, we'd only covered two of the areas we wanted to talk about. Such was the intensity of the conversation. So in the end, Joe generously spent over six hours across three separate sessions discussing his current view on these fundamentals of playing the harmonica. So six hours. So what follows is part one of what was an extremely in-depth conversation. Now, Joe was so enthusiastic uh, to go into the levels of detail that you're going to hear, and he just essentially lays it all out. For me, this was an epic conversation and a privilege to geek out on this topic with one of the world's leading authorities and players. I personally feel this level of conversation about the harmonica is pretty rare and one that perfectly suits this podcast medium. So I hope you enjoy this and the other episodes as much as Joe and I did making them. Now anyone who knows Joe will testify to his unrivaled knowledge, musicality and passion for the harmonica but also blues and his just general demeanour as a positive, kind and generous person. I think all of that comes across here. So it was a real pleasure for the maiden voyage of this podcast to be with Joe. And what a great conversation it was. In this episode, Joe gives an overview of the five fundamentals. We discuss the importance of tongue blocking and then tackle chords, which is the first of the five fundamentals. And the others will follow in subsequent episodes. So... Without further ado, let's get into this podcast. I am super excited today to welcome to the podcast, Joe Felisco, who joins us from Chicago. How are you doing, Joe? I'm exceptionally well today, Lee. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well too. I'm, I'm all good. Now as a Brit, I've got to mention the weather. It's a beautiful, sunny uh, day. I'm, I'm speaking to you from, from my bedroom in in london and uh you see so you're you're over in chicago how are things over there nice it's a very nice day today uh sun is out and it's gonna warm up to about 60 degrees fahrenheit i think when we get done here i'm gonna go take a long bike ride or a jog or something get some exercise in yeah so yeah. Uh, so, so so important most people listening to this will will be familiar with Joe uh, and his work, but for for those those who aren't, Joe is one of the finest blues harmonica players uh, in the world. He's a, a leader in pre and post war blues, Chicago blues, the styles of people like Sonny Terry and going further back in time, pre war blues, and he is also one of the world's most foremost uh, customizers and pioneered what we think of modern day harmonica customization. He makes harmonicas for people like Howard Levy and Kim Wilson. So he has a deep, deep connection to the instrument, not only musically and playing through, but but also how it works. And I think both on the dimensions of playing and the instruments he makes, Joe has an incredible attention to detail and that some people may describe as obsessive but when you hear him play or you play one of his instruments you can really feel the passion that he has for the harmonica and the incredible depths that he goes into this uh, instrument and joe's also a, a passionate educator and has been involved in teaching for over 30 years he teaches regularly at the old town school of folk music in chicago and has put on master classes all over the world and increasingly is is doing things online which we all have to do in this in this period so i'm absolutely delighted to welcome joe onto the podcast and i remember the first time i heard you play joe live um we were together and i said oh let's have a little jam together and this this is how 
great a player Joe is. And I personally pride myself on, you know, my tone. And I work very hard at getting a nice sound out of the, out of the harmonica. And when I said to Joe, oh, let's, let's have a quick jam, I was so blown away by his sound, I literally couldn't play. And, and we got to the end and Joe was like, oh, no, I thought this was a jam session. <laughs> so if you're not aware of Joe Felisco and haven't heard him live or on record, uh, I, I really encourage you to, to do so. So that's a bit of background to, to Joe himself. With all that said, there's a whole ton of stuff we could have spoken about, Joe. We could have spoken about harmonica customization. We could have talked about the style of Sonny Terry or pre-war blues. We could have done a whole thing on tongue blocking. We bounced a whole load of things. But in the end, you were really keen to talk about this, this, this idea of the fundamentals uh, of, of playing the harmonica. And this is something you've been thinking about a lot recently. So do you, do you want to explain a bit about that subject and why it's so important to you? This year, I turned a corner uh, into my teaching, trying to get deeper, trying to get to a deeper understanding of what it takes to play the harmonica really well. And in a, in a way, in a similar way that if you want to build a very tall building, you have to be very attentive to the foundation of that building and you have to make sure that the foundation going down can handle the building going up. Same thing with like a tree. If a tree is going to grow vertically and not have a root system that grows down and deep, the tree is going to fall over. Yeah. And I have just encountered too many situations uh, watching, listening to players, maybe completely full of ambition uh, and even students of mine that they want to grow. They want the next level. They want to grow higher and taller. And I've only recently been able to actually say, I think that's good, but it's better that we try to have a deeper and more secure foundation and root structure underneath your playing, because then when you're growing up, out in vertical, uh, everything will be better supported. And I also feel like there is tremendous confusion about what I'm saying I think are the fundamentals of good harmonica playing. I, I just think that if you took a toll from uh, a dozen highly accomplished players, you'd see some similarities, but there would be a lot of disagreement. Certainly there would be a lot of disagreement with what my feeling is on the matter. And so I'm just really excited to put some headspace into this and try to map out some things, maybe to create some discussion or yeah. to just give people some things to think about in terms of what are the basic fundamental rudiments of pl playing the harmonica really well, predominantly in a uh, blues setting, predominantly, but not totally. It is, I guess, the instrument is, the harmonica is one of those instruments where people are attracted to play it, motivated to play it for different reasons. And often people are, you know, they want to jump straight to playing little Walter or they want to jump straight to doing overblows and, and, and things like that. And in my experience, a lot of harmonica players will say or describe themselves as an intermediate or any, an advanced player when in fact, if they were playing any other instrument and um, were being judged on it, they would be considered a beginner. So there is this temptation to kind of overstate where people are. And, and it's because I think we all have this desire to, do and play the things that we hear that inspired us on on record or or seeing people live and so it's very easy with the harmonica to sort of go down a path where you don't have this this foundation this root system as you call it i, I would definitely agree that it's 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 very easy just to move on and and not think you've got these down when in fact you that you that you haven't You've divided these fundamentals into essentially five 
headlines. What are the five headlines? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one in a bit of detail. And I, and I, sh- I should say that Joe and I are going through this off the cuff. I have no idea whether this is going to be cut into three episodes, two episodes, because the conversations that Joe and I've had previously, we could dedicate a whole episode just to one of these areas. But what, what are the five fundamentals in terms of the headlines, Joe? This is currently the way I have it broke down. Uh, The first is chords. And the reason that I'm starting with chords is because they are unquestionably the easiest thing to play on the harmonica. If If you can breathe, then you can play chords. I want to also say, Uh, that I think is really important that uh, a chord, the default of a chord is basically the lowest holes on the harmonica. So if you play holes one, two, and three, uh, inhaling or exhaling, then that is a chord. Uh, And when you're doing that, you're also doing that from a, a puckering embouchure. The only thing on the harmonica and around those holes are your lips. So by definition, to me, that is lipping, puckering, pursing. And when you play the chords, there's two extreme approaches. The pure rhythmical way that you can play the chords or the pure non-rhythmical play way you can play, the sustaining way that you can play the chords. Those are two very, yeah, two very extreme things that really, to me, relate to great players like Little Walter. Next, we've got active blues breathing. So if you want to make sound on the harmonica, there has to be some kind of breath going on, some kind of direction of breath. Sure. And <laughs> in, in this is an area that I've found that when people go to play blues on the harmonica, they greatly underestimate the hidden built-in challenges of how to breathe properly when playing blues. Yeah. So we've got chords, active blues breathing. And yep. next one. Chords and tongue blocking. So there's a technique that I call ghost cording. And it comes from what I also call a full tongue block. So if somebody sticks out their tongue at you, they're going to, you know, mm, do that kind of thing. And if you take that mechanism and you, and you put that to the face of the harmonica, you shouldn't hear anything if you try to breathe because your tongue is blocking everything. But if you take your tongue on and off the harmonica and expose and then cover the chord, that is the beginnings for what I call ghost chording. And it, it's a special har- blues harmonica thing that I can't quite figure out what other category to put it in, but it's, I'm thinking of it as a fundamental because everybody can stick out their tongue mm, and then put the harmonica on it. And and that is the beginning of a different embouchure, uh, different mouth placement on the harmonica. So that's the chords and tongue blocking. Okay. And then the other area is notes and tongue blocking. So essentially, if you relax your jaw and and open your mouth and you stick out your tongue, that is uh, the tongue blocking embouchure. And there is a variety of things that you can do with that. You can uh, keep your tongue more to the left side of your mouth and play a hole or a note out of the right side of your mouth. You can shift your tongue, hopefully just your tongue to the right side of your mouth and now you're uh, you've just switched it's like playing the piano and hitting a note with a pinky finger and then hitting the note with your thumb you right. can play a note out of the other corner of your mouth or if you align it in the middle then you can play a very important technique uh, for blues and older harmonica styles that most people come to know as octave playing. Uh, yeah, I refer splits. to it as, as splits. Yeah. Yes. And, and then we have the, the, the last one is the riff licks, hooks and songs. Yeah, correct. This is something that I cannot get out of my head when I think about people that identify themselves as blues harmonica players. I, I feel like 
there has to be some basic agreed upon repertoire that if you play blues on the harmonica, there are certain things that you should do, certain riffs or licks or hooks. Um, I have some ideas written down, but for example, this boogie line, which I'll play on an A harp, this to me, if you think of yourself as a blues harmonica player and you can't do this, that, that seems like a red flag to me. That's like someone that says they're a cook and they don't know how to fry an egg or do a very, very simple thing. Yeah. So uh, this is really uh, up for debate. People would have very strong opinions about what would be in this list. Yes. But I think I just want to get the discussion started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so that, that's just for, for everyone listening, the overview. So we, we've got chords, we've got active blues breathing, we've got chords and tongue blocking, which is a very specific thing and then uh, notes and tongue blocking, and then riffs, licks, hooks, and songs. So as is already sort of evident in the discussion we've had so far, Joe, tongue blocking is, is a key thing here. So I think before we get into going through each one, it's probably worth talking a little about, uh, about tongue blocking, a subject I know that you're, you're super passionate about. And I think tongue blocking as, a, as an area has been slightly demystified over the last few years just because of the abundance of information online and you know on tu- uh, on YouTube, but there's still a lot of uh, misunderstandings out there uh, and 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 different kind of uh, of viewpoints. So in terms of these fundamentals, so much of what we're going to discuss is grounded in, in in tongue blocking. So you know fun- fundamentally, why why do you think it's such an important technique for for people to have if they want to be playing? you know, blues, roots, traditional styles, styles like Little Walter or Sonny Terry or? I think the simple answer is that tongue blocking allows the quickest access to the biggest sounds and the fullest sounds that the harmonica makes. Uh, Sometimes people say you get a better tone when you tongue block. Of course, I agree with that, but um, I'm trying to be respectful to highly accomplished lipping uh, pucker players that really get a nice, clean, single note sound. But when you listen to a tongue block player, a traditional blues tongue block player, you're hearing this rapid exchange in in, uh, alternating between clean single notes and chords and octave splits and other things which create the end effect that there's more sound coming out of the harmonica than if you just play clean single notes. uh, That to me is always the smallest sound that comes out of the harmonica. I'm not saying anything about tone. I'm talking about sound. Uh, A player that incorporates octaves or splits into their playing, it is going to immediately double the size of the sound, the perceived sound uh, that is happening than a player that just plays clean single notes. Yeah. So it's the access. I completely agree. I think it's, you know, the diatonic harmonica already has quite a few constraints around it anyway. It's it's not naturally a, a chromatic instrument and the way that it's laid out, each, each octave, the notes are all laid out differently. So it's already got a number of challenges with it. And if you're not tongue blocking, you, you're missing out on all these other textures and possibilities and sounds that you can get out of it. So even if you don't come at it from the point of view of this sounds better or your tone is bigger or fatter, just not being able to play certain effects or certain sounds that you can only get tongue blocking when we think about being a blues a blues player um it, it, that, for me this is why it's such a it's such an important technique uh, to have but do, but but do you think people there's sometimes again coming back to the motivations and and what people are drawn to in terms of what they what they want to play I don't know what you think about this, but you, you know, I hear often people are looking to play, you know, fast or, or flashy licks, or they want to get 
you know, incorporate lots of overblows and play more modern contemporary styles, all, you know, all of which are, uh, are cool. And, and to do that, then pe people are moving more towards focusing on their lip pursing skills. But if you really want to get this kind of Chicago sound, this little Walter sound down, you, 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 you're basically not going to do it, are you? Unless you can tongue block. I mean, that's the bottom line. I would defer to the visualization of a one finger piano player uh, making a fist and extending one finger and playing the piano. How could you, how are you going to argue that that is going to be a more compelling, fuller sound than a piano player that is holding his fingers outstretched above the keys? When you hold your fingers outstretched above the keys, you can instantly play a note on one side, a note on the other, two notes together, a chord, it's instant access. And so from the way that I view it, and I started out not totally as a tongue block style player. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's about getting a sound out of the harmonica. And if the clean single note sound is of interest to you and it's what turns you on, well, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's it's not a new harmonica playing concept. If you listen to many of the urban harmonica players from the 1920s, uh, uh, Robert Cooksey comes to mind. He recorded many songs with Bobby Leakin in the 1920s, going back to, I think, 1926. It's a clean single note sound, and, and I think... It that's my least favorite harmonica playing. I really like the more complex sound. And I, I feel like uh, if you look at the size of the harmonica and you ask somebody to say what, what one word comes to mind to describe the, what you see, the size of the harmonica, they would say small. And I feel like the default sound that comes out of the harmonica is a small sound and the one of the marks of a expert an accomplished player is to make it sound big so thus the tongue blocking is really the key for making it sound big in the same way a piano player would use all his fingers to get a fuller and bigger sound yeah there's this idea of maybe the the what popularized the harmonica you know, in, in, in modern times, often the, that style of harmonica hasn't involved tongue blocking. If we think about, you know, I guess people like Bob Dylan or Mick Jagger or those kind of players, they're, they're not using these, this kind of technique that was actually very common when it, when it was first played. But for me, it's just, you can, if you take that boogie type riff that you were playing earlier, you play it lip person. <laughs> and then could compare it to it's night and day. And I think if you're just getting into the, the, the harmonica as a, as a, as a beginner, or you've been playing for a, for, for a while, everything we're going to talk about moving forward is, is anchored un, underneath this fundamental idea of if you, if you tongue block, it, it's just opening up this, this world of, of possibilities and not just in terms of tone, but as you say, being able to manipulate the tongue in such a way that you're able to access these different techniques. And, and, and when we're talking about the fundamentals of playing, if you want, if your goal is to play that, Sonny Terry style or, or, or Chicago type blues, it, it's a technique that you, you've got to get your head around. I would say yes, definitely. And to really punctuate the point in brief, if I could go back in time and talk to myself when I first started playing, I would really have delighted to know that the coolest sounding stuff predominantly, not exclusively, but predominantly comes from tongue blocking and when you're playing chords on the harmonica, you are puckering, you're just puckering with a wider embouchure. So the idea of not using your tongue and just encircling a hole or holes with your lips, uh, it's, it's not a, uh, we're not divorcing ourselves from the idea in being exclusive because I play lots of chords. I'm a, maybe the maybe the world's biggest fan of playing chords. So those are achieved by open, taking your tongue off and playing the chord and thus puckering. 
So, so you, you mentioned there that you, you didn't start out tongue blocking. And if you could go back in time and, and give yourself, you know, some, some early, early advice. And that, that, and that was definitely my, my experience. How, how long had you been playing for before you sort of started to realize, hold on, maybe there's something going on here. And, and how did you find out about tongue blocking? Did you, did you read it somewhere or did someone show it to you? Can you remember the moment where it was like, Oh, right. Uh, I believe probably one of the really big moments was listening to the music on the record harmonica blues of the 1920s and thirties and hearing D Ford Bailey do Davidson County blues, where you can clearly hear this rhythmic chord stuff going on where he's self accompanying himself with the tongue blocking and, and, uh, understanding that that was the only possible way to achieve it. Um, so I really knew about it initially, but I was also very mesmerized by the growing attention that Howard Levy was getting. And so that also really, really fascinated me. And I was constantly trying to battle, how do I take the tongue blocking and my love for blues and melody playing, which Howard is fabulous at, and, and reconcile in a blues setting. And yeah. then it was really listening to the Walters and the Sonnies that I was like going, okay, I do hear it in blues. It's just a little bit more hidden. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, for, for, for me, I it was when I was hearing little Walter in the muddy waters band and the te the textural stuff that he would be laying down the kind of <laughs> this kind of stuff. And you hear you'd be like, Whoa, what's that? And, um, and you try every way, <laughs> you know, but you, you, you just can't, you can't get those, th those sounds. Um, and then, uh, Paul, Paul Lamb, one of the, the, the greatest players we have in the, in, in the UK and Europe, he, he, he switched, he switched me onto it. So I hadn't really put two and two together, but I guess if I'd gone further back in time to the full baby and people like that, you can clearly, you can clearly hear it, but I wasn't listening to that kind of music. So my, my way into it was more, yeah, the Chicago sound and, and just knowing there was something else going on there, but I, 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 that I wasn't able to do lip pursing. So, so we could go on and on and on <laughs> about the tongue blocking. Um, but uh, we, I think it was important just to, to say a bit about that because so much of what we're going to talk about when we go through the, the fundamentals is going to tie back to, 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 that, to that technique. So why don't we, with that said, di start diving into these. So, so the first one is, is, is chords. And from my perspective, I'm, I'm, I'm really cool and pleased to see this, you know, right at the at the top of the list not only because it's um i was gonna i want to say easy but play, play, playing rhythm good rhythm is not easy but it's a it's a great entry point right but i think one of the things people miss out on especially when they're going for you know licks and faster playing and overblows is this ability for the harmonica to be a band in a box right and to and 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 to it's a very rhythmic and percussive instrument and if you skip this this part of the fundamentals you're missing out right on a on a on a huge part of what the harmonica is all about that's how i see it in terms of this particular one what what do you what, what's your view on chords it's right at the top of the list so so i guess it depends on who we're talking to because definitely some people are not interested in the chord sound. Um, they want to play melodies. That's the only thing that they're interested in playing. And, you know, I, I respect that. As someone who teaches and wants students to feel successful, I have to start somewhere where people will go, oh, wow, I can do this. I can do this, right, yeah. So if you start with clean single notes, that to me is the equivalent of taking a young child and saying, you need to go to school, but we're not going to start at the beginning. We're going to put you in fifth grade. Right. What's going to happen in that situation? Uh, it's, it's, they're going to it, get dejected. It's going, they're going to almost certainly 
be fully immersed in failure. And so that's my why the emphasis on the chords, because people can breathe, everybody can play chords, you're starting off on a good foot and reinforcing the positive, I can do this. Right. And, and then when you, and when you break it down, so here, you know, in the notes that you've got, so, okay, you, at the first glance, and I think, again, this is a great area to just demonstrate the pitfalls with the harmonica where something can seem incredibly simple, right? I'm just breathing in and out in the harmonica, but there's so much depth here. So you've got a few things here about, um, the rhythmic side of it. So how you get the different articulations. Um, it'd be great to hear you, you know, demonstrate some of that. And then with this, these, this basic, uh, in quotes, uh, a chord playing at the low end that you said, you, you know, you've got train imitations you can do, you've got shuffle grooves, you've got chord bombs, you've got different types of grooves. So what do you want to say, do you want to explain a, a, a bit about this thing? Uh, the point I'm just trying to encourage here is for people listening to this is, okay, it's chords and you just breathe in and out. So it can seem deceptively simple, but actually there's a huge amount of depth and, and things that you can work on and, and things that you, you, you can work on right through the whole time you're playing, right? It's not like you learn a chord and then you're done. These are things you have to work on continuously. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like the music that I've created with Eric Noden pays a tremendous, uh, homage to all this chordal rhythmic playing. I, I, I feel like uh, uh, we have need, I think we've captured all, every corner of the market in how you can use the chords on the harmonica in a tasteful musical way to be part of the ensemble. Um, I, I should also say that, you know, as a player, I love to play all the time. And that could be a red flag around other musicians because when they think of a harmonica player playing all the time, they're assuming that they're talking or they're going to be hearing a guy playing solos and riffs and licks and fills. Absolutely not. Complete polar opposite of that. This is about that, yeah. blending in with the rhythm section and right. creating a layer. Yeah, exactly. That's that, that is that is so important, you know, exactly as you say, if you, if you, if you, if you don't think about chords, if you're not tongue blocking and you can't do all these different textural effects that will come onto, but just thinking about chords and rhythm, it's, as you say, it's this ability to blend in and be part of the ensemble because I, I think of lead notes on any instrument in a, in a way can be a distraction. You can have fills and a lot of harmonica playing. It's certainly with, you know, the Muddy Waters band and stuff, You, the harp is kind of, you know, augmenting and, and drifting in and out of the vocals, right? But I think of the harmonica in particular, it's like a second vocal. And 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 if you've got some guy, some player playing, all, you know, all the time with single notes, you are not blending in. And so this is, this is a really important skill, a fundamental uh, that you're miss, missing out on. So uh, in the same way, I think about it as, you know, if you've got, and you just want to play on your own, you know, whatever, you know, just using that chordal stuff. But again, it's, if you take it out of a solo context, it, it is exactly as you say, it's how, how are you going to fit in a, in a band or a jam or an ensemble situation? So from, from, from a technical perspective, what you've got, you've got different types of rhythmic, options here with, with with the chords do you want to touch on some of this you've got breath pulse tone pulse tongue lips different articulations so there's a lot of detail here so as a musician uh, i think it might be fair to say you can never have good enough rhythm you can always you always want to try to have the best rhythm possible and there are definitely some things about playing the harmonica that make it unusually challenged to play with rhythmical precision. And I'm gonna get into some of that with the active blues breathing. But when you put the harmonica in your mouth and you do something that's rhythmical, where is that rhythm generated from? Well, there are a bunch of places. When it comes to the breath, you can break it down to uh, what I call the breath pulse. 
uh, and that is where you generate the rhythm from the throat, the glottis, kind of a coughing kind of sound, <laughs> in, in that sort of way. You hear that when you listen to players create a throat tremolo. As a genre of music, uh, Cajun music tends to have like the maximum amount of breath pulse in it. Maybe also old time music has a tremendous amount of breath pulse in it. So Could you give I'm, a little example? Yeah, 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 sure. So it's very accordion-like and I'm just pumping. Uh, of course, my diaphragm is moving, but I'm coughing with my throat in creating this. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so immediately we've gone from, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm breathing, but then you think, well, stop a second. Where is the breath powered from? Uh, and, and where in the body, you know, is it, is it, is it forward towards the mouth and thinner? Is it deep, you know, lower down? I guess these are all the things that, you know, a guitar player would think about their picking hand in terms of how they're powering the strings or a, vi or a violinist for a harmonica harmonica player the phys the physicality and you've talked a lot about this and i've seen you in, in your workshop you know and i guess that's linked to the next bit the active blues breathing the the physicality of something which is on the face of it so simple is is super important and it's a very deep well that you can go down to uh on a chord or a, or a single note in terms of how it's powered um so you, so you've got the, the the breath pulse that's brilliant here here, here you do that um, and, uh, and then you've got the tone pulse or how you might get other articulations with the tongue. Uh, yeah, tone pulse. Um, so in de that's like going through vowel sounds in your mouth. Um, if you listen to Sonny Terry, uh, you're going to hear a lot of this. This like going from one vowel to another. So I'm cheating a little bit because I'm also incorporating a little bit of the breath pulse in there. It's eventually they all sort of like a uh, like a recipe that they, they all kind of get mixed up in there. Right. But the yeah. rhythm that's being generated is coming from my tongue inside my mouth going through different vowel shapes. So this e is E-O, e E-O yeah. kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and to get that sort of, so it's, as you say, it's, it's rhythmic and sounds cool. It takes time. To get to, to get it like he did it, or to get it like you did you did it again. This is something that people listening to this should understand the fu fundamentals. Just like on a piano or any other instrument, you if you want to get really good, they are things that you keep working on and refining. I think about how I play rhythm after I've been playing five years compared to ten years compared to 15 years, compared to 20 years, to compare the 30 years, you know, it's, it's, it's a journey. You, you, it, it's a lot of depth here. <laughs> there is. There, I, it, I think it's overwhelming in some ways, but it's also exciting because you can get down. You can, I can listen to uh, just about any player and break it down into these little things and say, all right, here's where the breath pulse is happening. Here, if you listen carefully here, what this is is best explained as a tone pulse because he's changing uh, the, the uh, you know, the resonance of the mouth going from a, a nasally vowel sound to a throatier vowel sound. And it tone pulse wise, it's also a brilliant way to explain a player like Sonny Terry, which is one of the greatest harmonica playing enigmas that there is um so yeah the tone pulse right and so the the ability to change i guess the tonal quality of the of 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 the chord from maybe something that's a little th thinner to something that you know that kind of basic control of the of the tone dial in a way mm -hmm. fused yep. 
infused with the with the with the um the breath pulse that again a sort of fundamental technique that again you you need you would need to learn if you want to play those kind of styles or at least be aware of uh if if anything as i said uh you can apply the breath pulse the tone pulse all these things that i'm talking about you can apply this to playing chords splits uh clean single notes on the harmonica it's really where does the rhythm generate where does it start on the harmonica so the engine room it, almost exactly yeah okay um and then so you've got the articulations there um that's another important thing i guess how we get that syncopation or um you know um yes call out certain beats there's different ways you can do that right uh, it, it's generally tongue driven. So if you look at what goes on with the tongue, uh, we spoke about vowel sounds with the tone pulse. And now we're going to talk more about consonants sounds. So uh, one of the uh, simpler rhythms that you can do is what I call the hard shuffle groove. It really is inspired from Big Walter Horton. And it's just playing uh, in, out, in, out, tuck, a tuck, a tuck, a tuck. A. So there is a really good example of a simple consonant tongue articulation that uh, is highly effective. You know, you hear a lot of that kind of rhythmic breathing. Uh, I think it really comes a lot from players in Memphis in, in the who recorded on Sun early on in probably Big Walter Horton would be like one of the real kings of using that sort of uh, tongue articulation to create a rhythm uh, on a chord on the harmonica. Right. Um, and I guess some, sometimes you would be doing maybe putting because you can do that with with your tongue just on the roof of your your, your mouth um and getting but also you can you, you can do that actually on the harmonica as well to, to create different different effects too right different you can you can you can yes so um, so that's another another dial to play with right so you you know you, you there's 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 different ways of achieving that effect and they all have their same um you know their, their their pros and cons depending on what you're do, you're you're doing at the time. Uh, th then we've got diaphragm, and uh, and you've got here upper range only. What what do you mean by that? Well, the you could say that anytime you're breathing, that the diaphragm is uh, the muscle of the diaphragm is being used, and that's kind of true. Um, if you take a breath in, what's happening is the diaphragm is basically pushing downward and pushing all your organs downward and allowing your lungs to fill up with air. Um, so as long as you're breathing in, the diaphragm is being used. When you breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes and allows the air to escape. Uh, but it's it's sort of being used, but it's actually kind of like turning off slowly. And now here's a real interesting thing. When you get to the middle range of your breathing, which is exactly where you and I are right now, which is your relaxed state, if you want to continue to exhale, the, I don't think the diaphragm is used in this place. You actually engage a different set of muscles that start to squeeze the torso and squeeze the remaining air out of your lungs. So that is the uh, lower range of your breathing, which most people, quite honestly, I think don't even know exist when they right. play the harmonica. They, they have no need to go there, but they do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so the, if I'm doing the breath pulse or I'm doing the tone pulse, uh, the diaphragm is always involved in that sort of breathing. There is a thing known as a diaphragm tremolo or diaphragm 
vibrato. Uh, I think I've heard people also refer to it as a laughing tremolo. It, so right. if you if you say ha, 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 and you pant similar yeah. to a dog, that is creating or, or can create a tremolo type of effect on a chord, a split, a clean single note. You can do it. Uh, it never looks comfortable to me. Anytime I've ever seen anybody do it, I, I am struck with the feeling of, wow, that it sounds pretty good, but you look like you're working really hard to make that happen. So usually, and this is my theory, listening to the great players, the D Fords and the Sonnies and the Walters, uh, when you listen to those great players, they're ten, probably moving the diaphragm slowly, evenly, and gradually, and the rhythm is coming from the throat yeah. uh, for the breath pulse, the tongue, you That's know, and, 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 and so that is kind of the mechanics behind how breathing ends up translating into something that is rhythmical sounding uh, yeah. on the harmonica. Uh, and I, I think there's a, just to throw this in there, actually, as we're kicking this around. So in the same way that the chords are important because it's, it's, a, it's a good starting place. So you're not going straight into fifth grade. Then you've got this idea of, yeah, this is how you can play the instrument on your own without any backing, which is one of the greatest things about it. But then it's also the on-ramp to being in an ensemble um, session but just listening to you speak there there's something else which i know that you go on a, a lot about and it isn't called out here specifically but i know it's very important to you and and i certainly see it and i and and we've already touched a little bit on it around the the the, the physicality of it the the breathing which I, I guess we'll we'll touch but there's something around what what prompted me to think this was talking about the the laughing diaphragm thing and a lot of beginner players intermediate players you see they tense up don't they when they play and, I, and you even hold a mirror you have a mirror in your workshop and hold it up to people so it's this thing i know myself you know when i was first started playing i would used to crush my harmonicas <laughs> right the cover plates i would crush them because i'd be holding them so tight and uh, but you see players who you know they have their 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 shoulders right up by their their um their ears you know and if you combine that with this kind of you know, incorrect breathing technique, you know, A, it doesn't look cool, but um, again, from a fundamentals point of view, very early on, you're, 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 you're laying down bad habits, you know, play, playing the harmonica well it, it is about being relaxed. Would you, would you agree with that? The kind of whole physiology of it and, and not, especially if you're playing good, well-tuned or custom harmonicas, they don't need a lot of force um, and when you're first starting out, you're not really tuned into either how to really understand the nature of each read. Um, they all, they're all got their own characters and how, how the, where the breath comes from the engine room, so to speak. You, you... 100% agree in every way. Uh, but I would only add to that, that you can't, tell somebody you need to relax that doesn't work because they they translate that into something that only makes them more tense of course relax <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work does it <laughs> and a lot of the breathing uh it's partially cor correct but it it really I've never heard anybody talk about the breathing in a way that I think hits the bullseye because uh, a lot of the correct breathing, and of course this goes into the active blues breathing section, a lot of the breathing is uh, uh, maybe martial arts oriented or yoga oriented or right. even singing oriented. Well, mm. I, I'll, I will bait this next one by saying, Proper breathing when you sing is the exact opposite of proper breathing when you really want to play blues on the harmonica. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Yep, because it's inver it's inverted. A lot of if you're playing cross position most of the time, then a lot of it is is, is breathing in. But I, I, in a sense, I guess what I'm throwing in here, which I know you talk a lot about, is just the 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 
the, the physicality of playing the harmonica as as a fundamental and 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 when we're playing chords and thinking about it early on uh and what we have to be aware of is as as we're progressing within the area of chords it is not to tense up and really to tune into these different levers that you've spoken about in terms of you know to- tone pulse where the notes are coming from and how you can change the sound with different consonants and, and, and vowels there's a lot there's a lot there with, with, with all that said we can't be in this area and not ask you to give us a a, a quick demonstration of a of a couple of things right so and i i i imagine i should i should say this this fundamental list are you are you thinking about putting it on your website somewhere or somewhere where people can see it so so we'll go back to that at the at the end just to make sure people get hold of this list but um there's a couple of things on here which i think would be great if you could give us a, a little a, a little example and we're basically talking about the lower the lower range of the harmonica and there's so much you could do with it it'd be great to hear you do a little bit of the the train imitation because obviously that's very rhythmic and percussive and and then a, a, a sunny terry groove could you g- give us an example so this brings together everything we've just been talking about right you betcha so if i do the uh, what i think is the most important train it really involves the breath pulse more than anything else whoa um, whoa, whoa 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 the most important train i can't <laughs> let that statement slide so again this uh, i'm i'm guessing there's lots of different types of train imitations and that statement implies you somehow rank them or have a view on what is the so why is this the most important one uh it goes back to the idea that the harmonica naturally creates a small sound and one of the things that you want to do uh, if you aspire to being the best player you can is as you said learn to relax and open up your vocal track so that you can create the maximum amount of resonance in your head mouth area and throat and if you can open that up uh, that is like what all really highly accomplished players do. They make the harmonica sound un- otherworldly big. They can't believe it. So you develop that by doing the train imitation uh, with the breath pulse style. So I'll, I'm getting that coughing sound, uh, two breaths out, two breaths in. Right. <laughs> I'm kind of like doing a throat tremolo now, <laughs> but I'm breathing twice, still twos and twos. Okay. All coughing kind of mechanism. And, and, and that is so effective and so powerful. And, but to get it smooth and to be able to play it for a while, you know, for a period of time, it takes practice. It's not, it's not trivial. It's, I, I, I can't emphasize enough in terms of what I want to sort of contribute to the discussion is this idea of anyone can pick up the harmonica and breathe out and breathe in twice in a coughing sound, right? But that does not mean you've got a cool train imitation, right? People work on these, those things for years to get, to, to get them right. And I, and I don't say that to try and put people off. It's, it's, it's more around the sense of building a craft and, and the journey and recognizing to come back right to the top, this idea of building good foundations if you want to have a tall building or for a tree to grow, right? And it's recognizing these things are are not trivial and need to be worked on. I, I definitely think so. Um, and I, I have for years been telling students or anybody that wants to listen that what I just did, that big tone, uh, throat, uh, tone pulse, excuse me, uh, breath pulse train, that is the single best exercise that there could be for developing better harmonica playing habits. 
I believe it's the best. And I've actually, at the beginning of this year, um, made made it more of a priority of revisiting it, even in my advanced classes, making students do it. And I'm really happy with the results that I'm getting, especially because people are now spending more time in front of their computers. They're videoing themselves and they're like, wow, I, I had no idea. I look so tense. Did, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what, so what about a, a little bit of Sonny Terry again, to, we're talking about chords. He uh, uses a lot. Could you give us a little piece of I, that? I will, but let me quickly do the other extreme. And that is the train imitation with the, uh, articulation. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tongue. Yeah. Yeah. So Beautiful. this, I did in my throat. This is the biggest train, most open and resonant. Now I'm going to do it the other extreme. That's with my tongue. So just doing Other extreme. So cool. if I am doing stuff with Eric or part of an ensemble, I will probably do it that way because it's more rhythmic. It's more, um, it fits better with a band than an open throated uh, train in right. rhythm. But in a, in a solo piece, I guess you'd mix up both, both styles and, and when, yeah. and when you, when you throw your hands in there as well, you can get, you can get, get, uh, even more tonal variation, right? You betcha. You betcha. That's just, that's another element. And I, I, I deliberately try to keep it really simple so people can see what I'm doing, um, and not be distracted by the, you know, the, the finger wiggler guys. <laughs> yeah. Which is, yeah, which you, is flash. Flat, flash, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, what about a little bit of um, Sonny Terry before we move on to active? You betcha. Uh, so, Sonny Terry, when he was doing a uh, rhythmic piece, he had essentially two main defaults. One was the standard old-time Lost John Fox Chase uh thing, which is the, yeah. that sort of thing, yeah. or this other chordal rhythm, which is definitely unique to him. And it's a real big combination of breath pulse, tone pulse. And uh, the key to it really is the breathing, is to catch in a real specifically where the exhale breaths are. There's a short exhale breath and a slightly longer exhale breath. And if you deviate from those exhale breaths too long, it won't sound like Sonny Terry. So it, in its simple form is. Amazing. And so when we're saying the exhalation breath, that there, there isn't silence there. You're not just, you know, breathing the, the, the your, your, those out breaths are also playing chords, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there's a continuous, continuous rolling sound. That's, that's, that's what I hear when I, I hear you do that. And, and Sonny Terry's that, that kind of rolling, uh, smooth bouncing style. It's not an angular aggressive style. You know, um, I totally agree. And it it's just saying that you play those exhale chords there at those places. That's only like a half truth. It's it's not a lie, but there's more going on at those exhale places than just playing the chord because I'm I'm leaking air at that point in order to keep my balance and keep my strength inhaling uh strong and robust if i if i 
if I only exhale out of my mouth the same amount of air I'm uh, breathing in, then I'll get all backed up and, and be one of those. Yeah, one yeah, of those absolutely. players. So, so that rhythm, presumably, you can hold and play for a long time when you uh, like in, yeah. in, infinitely, basically. Yes, the which the biggest problem would be the need to swallow. Yeah, that's right. I, I, yeah, or your throat locks. Yeah, that's what that's that's what that's what happens when you play that for a, for a long time. Yeah, but uh, I guess a lot of people run out of air before before that's uh, that that's an issue. That's brilliant to um, demonstrate some of those styles. So, so we've been talking about chords and there's so much depth just in, in that one area. Brilliant session. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah, get, we're getting into enough depth, I feel. Thanks, Joe. It's been, been an absolute <laughs> pleasure, man. I'm really enjoying it. I, I just, it works. I don't know. I think we got chemistry and it's just very delightful, very rewarding to me. And Thank you for uh, allowing it to happen. Pleasure, pleasure. I, ca I can't wait to put it all together. So there you have it. We've set the scene, outlined the five fundamentals and gone deep on the very first one, which is chords. In the next episode, Joe and I discuss active blues breathing and potentially another fundamental depending on how the edit goes. If you've enjoyed this podcast, you can help by writing a review and giving it a rating. You can also get in touch with your questions, comments and ideas by emailing info at leesankey.com. Thanks again for listening and I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Replate. Until next time, my name is Lee Sankey and keep well.